Okay, today we will look at the um, 130 to 150 word uh, writing task. That is the second task uh, on your writing paper, on your higher writing paper. Uh, the exam board is at Excel. We will look at how to achieve the grade 9 and I will walk you through um, the ex assessment criteria uh, through an uh, um, example response, but also uh, through the planning uh, using structure strip. Uh, the total mark for this question is 28, and this is split again between uh, your content and communication and language and accuracy. Uh, so let's have a look uh, what we need to do. Okay, here we are looking at communication and content uh, assessment criteria. The total mark is 16. We will be looking specifically at this stop banding here. So we are looking at how can we score the 16 marks 15 marks. Uh, so we need to communicate detailed information relevant to the task. That means we need to answer all four bullet points and these need to be also consistently developed. Okay, so we're looking at extended uh, sentences, extended structures, um, not looking at simple sentences. Uh, we can consistently adapt the language to narrate and to inform. So we are looking at using also creative language. So using language creatively. So we are looking at sentences with your um, while, with your das, with your obwal, your when and al structures, using your infinitive with om zu or infinitives with zu, uh, using modal verbs. We are looking at use of comparatives and superlatives. We are looking at interesting adjectives and interesting language using, you know, um, when we look here, it says a wide variety of voca vocabulary and expressions. We're looking and using some idioms, okay? That would be your uncommon language. Looking at really interesting adjectives, not basic adjectives, but really interesting adjectives uh, uh, in order to um, get our um, readers, um, you know, involved and consistent use of register and style. So if it's formal, we have to use your formal Z and ihr and ihre. If it's informal, we're using du, dein, deine. So it needs to, um, you need to make sure that if it's a formal letter response to someone, it has to read like that. It has to have that layout. So here we are looking at how to achieve the, you know, the, the top marks in your linguistic knowledge and accuracy. So basically language, use of language. We're looking at using wide variety of structures, including complex language. So your sentences are extended sentences, complex sentences using your when, your when, your als, your obwohl, your damit, deswegen, using um, connectives to link your sentences, uh, using your uh, modal verbs, using your infinitives with uh, um zu. Uh, your response has to be fluent throughout with extended and well-linked sentences. So your sentences have to be linked. So your writing reads really nicely and fluently. Um, and, and the language you're using is consistently of, of you know, of, of high quality. Uh, your language has to be consistently accurate. So it doesn't have to be 100% correct, 100% accurate, because as a not native speaker, you will make mistakes. So it doesn't expect 100% accuracy, but consistently accurate. Consistently, you have to be successful with your references to past present and future events. So demonstrating that you can use past, present, future, even your conditionals uh, really confidently. You know, if you make any errors, because as I said, you don't have to be 100% accurate, these errors do not hinder clarity of the communication. So whoever reads it, that means they still understand and know what you're trying to say. So there will be probably likely mistakes in a more complex structures, especially if you will be using variety of tenses and your structures are complex, that there might be problems with the word order, you know, especially when using, you know, your modal verbs, for example, in a past tense or your conditional, your hätte, your könnte, your wäre and infinitives. But any of these mistakes that you make, they do not hinder the clarity of the communication. Your reader still knows what you're trying to say. 
Okay, so here we can see a task and it is uh, your question two on your higher paper. Now remember, uh, the question two has got a choice A or a B. So I would really strongly suggest that you look at both the topics and you read the task really carefully and then choose one which you feel confident about. One you can respond to, you are confident with the vocabulary, you understand the bullet points and what the topics wants from you. So here we have a scenario Ein Hotel. So we know we are in a hotel and uh, you have stayed in this hotel, okay? So Sie haben in einem Hotel in Deutschland gewohnt. Now what you have to do is, schreiben Sie einen Bericht für die Managerin des Hotels, damit der Service für die ausländischen Gäste besser wird. Okay, so we know that we're writing to a female because we have Managerin. We know that if it's ending on iron, we're writing to a female, not a male. We are writing a report, so we're looking at a formal register. And we're going to be writing a report about how the service could be improved for the foreign guests. So what, 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 what maybe the manager could do. And this is what you have to do. Sie müssen diese Punkte einschließen. So you must include these bullet points. Remember from the mark scheme, we have talked about that in order to score the top band, you have to answer all four bullet points. Okay. And you have to extend them and you have to use really eloquent language. So bullet points are, warum sie in diesem Hotel gewohnt haben? So why did you stay in this hotel? We're looking here at use of past tense. Was ihnen gefallen hat? Now don't confuse this word from fallen as to fall. Gefallen means liked. Why did you like, or, or, or what, what, did you, what did you like in this hotel? So fallen is to fall. But then we have to use ist gefallen, okay, so we're using or bin gefallen. When you have hat gefallen, it's from the verb gefallen, which means to like something, okay? So don't confuse these two verbs because often that's the case that, you know, these two verbs get confused, okay? Because people think oh, it's a past participle, um, you know, and it's from the word uh, fall, okay? So that's your opinion you have to express here, okay? So we're going to talk about uh, what did you like. Now, third bullet point. Welche Schwierigkeiten ausländische Gäste im Hotel haben? So here is using present tense. So what difficulties do the foreign guests have in the hotel? So again, thinking what could we write here about? Okay, what are the common problems foreign guests usually have in hotels? And the third one, okay, where you got your conditional or possibly future tense, but we're looking here at conditional. Wie das Hotel den Service für ausländische Gäste verbessern könnte? So how could the hotel improve the service for the foreign guests? You need to uh, justify your ideas and opinions. So rechtfertigen Sie Ihre Ideen und Meinungen. And you have to write approximately 130 to 150 words in German. So this is our scenario. This is our task. So here we're going to be looking at the bullet points from the language point of view. So we know that the first um, question is asking is why we stayed in this hotel. So reasons for staying in this hotel, we will be using past tense, but we also have to justify, okay, so we're using past tense. So we're looking at structures like ich habe in diesem Hotel gewohnt, weil ich bin in diesem Hotel geblieben, denn es gab. So we're looking at, uh, you know, maybe even starting with when did you stay in a hotel? When did you arrive? You know, even saying, why did you arrive? Okay, so what, what was the reason staying in the hotel? Talking about what the hotel had, you know, as facilities wise, uh, and then expressing opinion and justification or what the hotel did not have. Now, in the second bullet point, we're looking at, again, opinions in the past tense. So what did you li liked? Uh, what did you like? Um, we can use either perfect tense, Okay, so die Lage des Hotels hat mir gut gefallen. Okay, so the location of the hotel I really liked. Or you can use your imperfect tense. Ich fand die Mitarbeiter echt toll. I found the, um, the you know, the personnel, the personnel uh, really great. Okay, because they were um, helpful. So we're looking at reasons. Okay, we're looking at, um, you know, again, interesting vocabulary. Here we have got maybe uh, the genitive case, die Lage des Hotels. So, Use of past tense, perfect or imperfect, both would be absolutely fantastic. Now, third one is again asking um, for giving reasons. Okay, so giving reasons uh, why this, you know, first of all, saying that the guests had problems and then saying why they had the problems. So we're looking at your connectives, your while, your das, your obwohl, your da, or even damit. Okay, so da einige Gäste kein Deutsch sprechen, because some guests don't speak German, kann es schwierig sein, sich zu verstehen. It can be difficult 
to understand each other. Okay, so we're looking at maybe seeing what the problem was, uh, why it was a problem, okay, and then it will lead itself to the fourth bullet point where you uh, suggesting to the manager how could the service be improved for these for uh, guests. So using maybe your conditionals here, so vere, kente, gebe, uh, sorry, vere, könnte, gebe, and uh, uh, also, uh, you know, constructions with them, maybe. Wenn die Mitarbeiter mehr Englisch sprechen könnten, wäre es besonders nützlich. So, if the um, um, workers or the, the personnel or the service uh, could speak more English, um, it would be especially useful. So, here we're looking at really quite complex structure in the first bullet points. And maybe this is the bullet points where you have to be uh, especially uh, careful because probably this would be the point where you could possibly make mistakes. Okay, so here we see uh, an, an example response uh, where the candidate has addressed all four bullet points nicely and uh, the, the response is really um, extended using quite complex structures. Uh, this candidate actually scored the, to uh, the, 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 the uh, top marks in the top band um, uh, and we can see that the, the response is really well structured as well. So it does start as a report. Mein Besuch should be im Hotel, not zum Hotel. Um, uh, if it was correct, and then we have nice uh, extended response to the first bullet point. Ich habe in diesem Hotel gewohnt, correct, da es mir either von meinem deutschen Freund or von meinen deutschen Freunden empfohlen, now the past participle was not right here, wurde, but we can see here that the person is using passive voice, in, 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 you know, uh, and that, you know, it's aware of the dative case. Uh, ich hatte auch gehört, now here we got the use of pluperfect tense, Okay, das, uh, das uh, this klasse wacke, we don't need to have an accusative here, but again, correct word order. Deshalb habe ich mich auf um, meinen Besuch, uh, mein Besuch gefreut. Okay, so we have again, correct use of the habe mich auf gefreut, so we have a correct past participle. Now, the next sentence again, ich wollte in einem gemütlichen Hotel übernachten, damit ich die beste Erfahrung hätte. Now, we got a you know um, model verb here in a past tense with the uh, correct um, word order having the infinitive at the end. Then we got damit, and again because we're using damit, we have to have again verb at the end. Uh, damit ich die beste Erfahrung hätte, hatte, uh, you know. Uh, but we, we can see a really complex structure. The first bullet point fully answered, nicely extended. You know, interesting vocabulary used. Now, looking at the second uh, bullet point, im Allgemeinen, okay, um, might not be 100% correct here, fand ich das Hotel toll. Okay, das Zimmer, and it's not der Zimmer, so there is no correct gender here. Das Zimmer war sauber und alles hat funktioniert and everything worked, okay. Ich habe auch gedacht, so this is also nice use of a past tense, perfect tense, could be also the ich dachte, but um, using ich habe auch gedacht is correct. Das die Mitarbeiter, okay, we don't have the ending there, that's not right. Sehr freundlich waren, but we have a correct word order, das, and then the verb goes at the end. Obwohl sie, uh, would be better here probably to use ein bisschen rather than wenig ein bisschen or nur ein bisschen English sprechen konnten. Uh, again, we have got quite complex uh, structure here. So we got the infinitive here and then uh, the candidate remember that the conjugated the verb, which is in um, in a past tense, the modal verb, is at the end. Uh, das Essen im Restaurant war ganz lecker. Ich war sehr glücklich mit dem Service. Okay, so that's quite nice. Again, fully answered, extended bullet point two. Uh, really like the response. Uh, you, you know, I like the little the words here like ganz uh, um, and uh, funktioniert. Uh, so it's, it's, you know, im Allgemeinen. Interesting vocabulary. Now looking at the third bullet point, we've got here jedoch. Jedoch gibt es ein paar Schwierigkeiten um, für die ausländischen Gäste. Okay, so it's we're addressing now what other there are difficulties for the uh, foreign um, guests. Uh, die im Hotel wohnen. Okay, so we have got the uh, relative clause here, die, okay, um, which relates to the Gäste, and then a verb at the end, wohnen. Es kann sehr schwierig sein, 
Informationen zu verstehen. It can be quite difficult. Okay, so we got again modal verb, uh, um, infinitive to be at the end, um, and then we got again infinitive with zu, zu verstehen. Einige Gäste wissen nicht Deutsch. Now, that doesn't sound right with me. Uh, I would say that would be better. Einige Gäste sprechen kein Deutsch or können kein Deutsch sprechen uh, would, would be better. Also, das ist eine, eine der größten Probleme. Okay, so uh, the, the candidate is trying to use here a superlative. Okay, so, aber, also, das ist einer der größten Probleme. But again, the, the, the bullet point is fully answered. It's nicely extended. You know, really some complex structures, especially your two infinitives. Uh, we've got the modal verb use. We have got the um, superlative, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, einige. I, I really like the response. And then looking at the last bullet point where, uh, you know, the candidate had to write a, a suggestion to the manager how the service could be improved. Uh, ich glaube, dass es sehr nützlich wäre, so we have got conditional here, wäre, and using das, and then uh, in, uh, the, the verb goes at the end, wenn die Mitarbeiter, okay, so that should be, uh, you know, are not, and I'm not sure whether it's N or R, or whether it's just a spelling, mehr Englisch sprechen könnten. Okay, so it would be uh, it would be uh, very useful if the um, co-workers or the people employed there could speak more English. Die ausländischen Gäste werden glücklicher, werden glücklicher sein, würden, probably, would, be, would be probably better, would be happier. Again, the candidate is using the comparative here, glücklicher. Correct adjectival endings, die ausländischen Gäste. Weil sie können werden, oh, weil sie mehr verstehen könnten vielleicht. So this is a little bit ambiguous here, so it's a little bit muddled up. Die ausländische Gäste würden, würden glücklicher sein, weil sie mehr verstehen könnten, would be probably better in my opinion. So we got a little bit muddled up here with the, with the zu and modal verbs. Ich bin sicher, ich bin mir sicher, dass das den Service verbessern könnte. Okay, but that, that's a nice structure. Maybe ich bin mir sicher should be better. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, again, co another complex structure, das, and we've got again a modal verb at the end, uh, correct word order. So overall, okay, except for maybe this sentence here, which is a little bit, um, um, you know, um, unclear. Uh, but as I said, you know, as a, as a, as a German person or somebody who is influent in German, you would um, get the meaning of the person, what, what the person wanted to say. So maybe would not score the uh, 16 marks, uh, you know, for content and, you know, uh, your um, uh, absolute top in the, in the language, maybe one mark less, but it would be, def it is definitely a, a response for the top band and it has been actually awarded the, the marks in the top band. Okay, so here we are looking at a structure strip which we, use, we would use normally in a lesson when we are planning our writing. Now, obviously, you're not going to have this in your exam, so I would suggest when you are sitting in an exam, uh, still think about each bullet point, maybe brainstorm some ideas, some uh, vocabulary or some connectives or idioms or structures you want to use on the side, just as a guidance. I would not go straight into maybe writing the response, but I would uh, spend, uh, you know, five minutes maybe planning and laying things things out. Now in the lesson you got the use of the structure strip. So you know what the task is. You have to write about 130 to 150 words. I would split each bullet point and try to write uh, roughly, I don't know, 35 words for each bullet point. You know, if there is a bullet point where you can write a little bit more, then you can write about the um, another one. You know, uh, as long as you address the bullet point, uh, you will be scoring marks. Um, so uh, we, we do need to make sure that these responses are, uh, you know, extended and that all of them are addressed in order to score in the top band. So in the first bullet point, you know, um, think about what vocabulary we're talking about, reasons for staying. You can start where you stayed, what was the name of the hotel, when you stay there, who you stay there with, what was the occasion for the stay, um, using your past tense, giving complex opinion, okay, giving complex opinion in the past tense as well. If you look at the second bullet point, it's asking what you liked um, about the hotel. Now, you can also write what you did not like. So you can say that, you know, um, even though um, I liked, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the location of the 
hotel, uh, I did not uh, like um, the food or, you know, the food was cold. Or, so you got to think about what it is you can do to extend it and how can you balance it. So we're looking in past tense, we're looking at complex opinions. You can use comparisons, so you can compare it to another place you have stayed. So it's really think about what it is I can, um, I can write about. Third bullet points, we are talking about the problems the guests have, foreign uh, guests. So, you know, it could be the language barrier. It could be the different food. Uh, it could be the different, um, I don't know, weather, that it is too hot or it is too cold or the time difference. So there is various things you can talk about, okay? Again, justifying uh, your uh, your ideas. You can compare you know, uh, to the uh, to the place you stayed before or the country you stayed before. Uh, you can use superlatives saying that something was the best or the worst. And then looking at the last bullet point, again, I would leave about 35 words. Uh, you can use conditional here. Es wäre besser, wenn das Personal, wenn, wenn uh, der Service Englisch sprechen konnte. Uh, you could use wenn and also phrases. You could use damit. You know, so there is a lot of uh, uh, vocabulary and structures you could use that we have practiced in a lesson that you, you know, we, you can always start with a little bit of basic and then see how can you write it a little bit more complex. Don't forget to double check after yourself, reread it, think about the rules, you know, pay attention to your EIs and IEs. If you hear the sound I, remember it is the second vowel in the vowel combination. When you hear the sound E, remember again it is the second vowel in the combination of the, uh, you know, uh, how you write it. So don't get this confused. Okay, we don't want to have leader spelled as leader because it will be then not right. Um, so think about, uh, you know, uh, your response, plan it, read it, proof check it, and I'm sure you will do well. Thank you.